The movie begins by showing a teenage girl, Rachel Hansen, who was riding in a hurry one night. Rachel was going to see her older brother, Tom Hansen, at his apartment. Tom was currently depressed because he broke up with his girlfriend. Feeling sympathy for her brother, Rachel, and Tom's two friends, Mackenzie and Paul, persuaded Tom to tell his problem. After Rachel drank a few glasses, Tom said he felt heartbroken after his beloved girlfriend, Summer, ended their relationship. He continued that on that day, Summer suddenly asked him to meet at their favorite restaurant, and she wanted to break up. Tom was devastated because Summer didn't explain why she left him. In addition, before the last meeting, Tom and Summer had no debates or issues that could trigger the end of their relationship. Paul and Mackenzie tried to cheer Tom up and suggested he move on from Summer. However, Tom still loved Summer so much and didn't want to forget her. He intended to get her back. The scene then turns to 500 days earlier, where Tom meets Summer for the first time at the office where Tom works. At that time, Summer worked as a new assistant for Tom's boss, and she had just moved from Michigan to New York City. When he saw Summer for the first time, Tom instantly fell in love at first sight. He was captivated by her enchanting charisma. Tom recounted that Summer had an incredible aura, and every man who saw her would be immediately attracted to her. She always got a lot of luck due to her beauty, such as getting very cheap apartment rental fees and bringing in many customers in a cafe, and even increasing the income from the bus that Summer always rides on. Four days after their first meeting, Tom was accidentally in the same elevator as Summer. Seeing Tom, who was listening to the music of the Smith Band, Summer tried to open the conversation by saying that she also liked the band's music. Since then, Tom has become more interested in her. The feelings he had for Summer became stronger. A few days later, when his company was having a party at the office, Tom started approaching Summer and asked her to have a talk. For added information, Tom worked for a company that printed various greeting cards, from birthday cards to wedding cards and death cards. Tom then told Summer that, in fact, he had been studying as an architect, but because he was unlucky, he got stuck in the company. The other day, Tom started talking to his little sister about Summer while playing video games. He told her that he had a lot in common with Summer. Tom felt it was a sign that he would probably mate with Summer, but his sister disagreed. One day while Tom was relaxing in a cafe with Paul and Mackenzie, he again said about his closeness to Summer which had recently begun to drift apart. At that moment, Tom almost gave up on approaching her because he was unsure if he could be with Summer. Tom once tried to seduce Summer with a compilation of songs from her favorite band, but it didn't work. The following night when Tom's company was having a party at a bar, Tom came to the party to meet Summer. He still hoped to date Summer, so he tried to get close to her again. That night when Summer suddenly sang on stage, Tom was increasingly fascinated by her, whom he considered a celestial angel. Tom tried to find out if Summer had someone special. With help from his best friend, Mackenzie, Tom finally discovered that, at that time, Summer still didn't have a boyfriend. He felt pleased as well as relieved to know that he still had a chance to date her. Summer then explained that she felt uncomfortable having a boyfriend because she wanted to be able to enjoy life at a young age. At midnight, Tom and Summer drove Mackenzie, who had been heavily drunk, into the cab. Before getting into the cab, Mackenzie said that Tom liked Summer so much. Tom then misbehaved and immediately pushed him away. After Mackenzie left, Summer suddenly asked Tom if what Mackenzie had said was true. With a bit of embarrassment, Tom finally admitted that he really liked her. Summer just returned Tom's words with a smile. Three days after the incident, Summer again met Tom in the photocopy room, and she suddenly kissed him very warmly. Tom obviously didn't waste the opportunity and passionately returned Summer's kiss. Unfortunately, the kiss doesn't last long and Summer suddenly leaves Tom confused. Upon arrival at the house, Tom immediately said to Paul about the kiss. Paul rushed to Tom's house to ask how he could end up kissing Summer. Unexpectedly, when Paul arrived at Tom's house, he was shocked that Summer had been there. Seeing that, he automatically understood Tom's intention and left him with Summer. The following day, Tom accompanied Summer to shop for furniture at a store he had in one of the shopping malls. While looking for a suitable item, Tom and Summer joked and pretended to be in a real house. Until they both slept on one of the mattresses displayed in the gallery, Summer confirmed to Tom that they were not currently in a serious relationship. Summer added that she just wanted to enjoy the happiness she felt when she was with Tom. Hearing this, Tom agreed to Summer's words and appreciated her desire to live a relationship without dating status. In the evening, Summer and Tom began to get carried away by the romantic atmosphere at Tom's house. They kissed warmly on the bed until they finally slept together all night. After successfully having a one-night stand with Summer, Tom felt incredible happiness. To him, the days seemed more beautiful than usual. With a radiant facial expression, Tom started his day with more confidence and hoped that his relationship with Summer could last. One day, Tom and Summer went to a DVD store to find the best songs. But after arguing about the music, they rent an adult film from the store and started watching it at Tom's house. After watching the adult movie while hugging tightly, they had sex again in the bathroom. 
A few days later, Tom invited Summer to walk around the city while showing her exciting places. He asked her to see the view of the city from his favorite place, a park on a high roof where they could see all the city buildings at once. Considering Tom once said he graduated as an architect, Summer asked him to draw the architecture of city buildings in her hands. 109 days after their first meeting, Summer took Tom to her apartment full of beautiful paintings on every corner. While lying in bed, Summer said about the dream she often experienced every night. And Tom kept looking at her with love. Summer then told Tom six words she had never spoken to anyone, instantly changing everything. Afterward, Tom told Paul, Mackenzie, and Rachel about it to find out what he should do next. Rachel then suggested he ask Summer about the status of their relationship before it was too late. But Tom was too scared to ask that because he was not ready for the answer that Summer might give, which answer could make his hopes extinct. Finally, Tom dared to ask Summer about it while in a car with her. Summer casually replied that she didn't know about their relationship status. For her, status was just a label of a relationship. Hearing that, Tom could only smile, knowing that their relationship did not have any clarity. Tom was one of the best employees at the company he worked for. His boss always praised his outstanding performance. One day while Tom and Summer were relaxing in the city park, they started shouting the word penis to express their frustration. Tom and Summer then went to an art gallery to see some art sculptures before going to the cinema to watch a movie. In the evening, they went to a nightclub to drink while talking about their daily lives. An old man in a suit came up to Summer and started flirting with her in front of Tom. At first, they did not seem to mind the old man's presence. However, when the man says he is not sure that someone like Tom could become Summer's boyfriend in a mocking tone, Tom immediately beats the man up. Unfortunately, the man countered Tom with a hard blow to his face. Tom and Summer then left the club. Upon arriving at her house, Summer suddenly scolded Tom for what happened at the club because she thought Tom wanted a bond between them. Tom tried to reason by saying that he only did that in defense of her. Summer did not believe that and immediately asked Tom to leave the house. Tom, who was upset, asked about the status of the relationship again. Summer did not give any answer, making Tom very angry, and he immediately left her. The following night, Summer came to Tom's house and apologized to him for all things she had done. Tom, who still loved Summer very much, accepted the apology, and they slept together again all night. The following morning, their relationship improved again, and they began to tell the story of their ex. Tom initially thought that it was a sign that Summer was starting to have feelings for him. It turned out that Summer was getting bored with Tom over time, and there was no passion in their relationship. The following day, Tom came to the office in a moody state with no spirit. Not only that, he had to accept that Summer was no longer working in the office starting that day. Soon, he got an email from Summer asking him to meet at her house next week and warning Tom to get ready to become her friend. Feeling heartbroken because Summer had friend-zoned him, he decided to relive all the things he had done with Summer. One day, Tom was called into the director's room due to his worsening performance over the last few days. Feeling that Tom was frantic and distracted, the director moved him to the obituary division to match his mood. Tom realized that Summer's leaving had made his life so fucked up. He tried to hypnotize himself, so he hated everything about Summer. Tom even tried to date another girl, Allison, to move on from Summer. Unfortunately, he still could not forget about Summer and even started telling everything about her to Allison when he was heavily drunk. One day, Tom traveled somewhere by train, and unexpectedly, he came back to see Summer. She then approached Tom, who had previously pretended not to see her, and began to invite him to speak. It turned out that Tom and Summer were going to the same event, a wedding invitation from their colleague, Millie. Knowing their destination was the same, Summer invited Tom to have a coffee in the train cafeteria and talk. Upon their arrival at Millie's wedding, Summer and Tom returned to remembering their habits while they were still together. The next evening when Summer and Tom were dancing, Summer invited him to her party that would be held next Friday. Tom came to Summer's apartment in a neat suit the following Friday, hoping to improve their relationship. Upon arrival at the apartment, Summer immediately greeted him. Tom met other guests. After giving a gift and talking to Summer for a while, Tom finally discovered that the party was Summer's engagement party with another man. Tom's expectations were instantly shattered when he was slapped by the reality that Summer, the girl he loved so much, would marry another man. In the evening, Tom felt so devastated and heartbroken that he decided to leave the party immediately. Since then, the days that Tom had been through became more and more severe. He was so depressed that it made him feel even worse. Tom's performance in the office also worsened, and even he almost ruined the meeting held by his director at that time. Feeling frustrated with his life, Tom resigned from his job and went to see Rachel, his little sister. Rachel told him to get rid of Summer's shadow from his life and not constantly remember his memories with Summer. After getting some advice from Rachel, Tom tried to get back on his feet by turning his mind to the work he would accomplish. He returned to study various architectural fields and began to compile portfolios to apply to several companies as an architect. On the other hand, Summer had also resumed her life and started her marriage with her fiancé. A few days later, Tom sat in the city park where he often spent time with Summer. 
Incidentally, Summer was also in the garden and they started talking. Tom then asked her why she changed where she was willing to be in a relationship with someone and marry that man. Meanwhile, she used to be very against a bond in the relationship. Summer only replied that it all just happened and that was the destiny in life that they had to live with. On the 500th day after Tom got to know Summer for the first time, he went to a company to do an interview as an architect. In the company lounge, Tom accidentally met a young woman who would be Tom's rival in the interview. Considering the previous Summer's message, Tom realized there was no destiny without effort. So, he invited the woman for a drink after the interview session ended. At first, the young woman refused, but she then changed her mind and accepted Tom's invitation. The film ends with a scene where Tom gets to know the young woman, and unexpectedly, her name is Autumn. The moral that can be learned from this movie is, to never depend on other people for our happiness. We can never demand others to guarantee happiness in our lives.